Yeah, well, it's, it's just driving me mad. I mean, my wife wants me to take her out for sushi, and I don't know what diver watch I'm supposed to wear. I need a watch that complements the color of the wasabi. Uh, no, I don't know, man. Uh, sushi. No, anyways, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Pavel Satsulin is a uh, kettlebell uh, master. I've been reading his book, and it really changed my life. Uh, he says some things I'm going to actually apply to watch collecting. Um, First of all, I got a 60 pound kettlebell a month ago and I was intimidated by it, but I've been using Pavel's uh, techniques, resting a little bit longer between sets, lowering my reps, I'm getting strong. I think I need a 70, I think I need a 70 pound kettlebell, but I'm old, I'm 58. I mean, do I really want to be doing swings and deadlifts with uh, heavy kettlebells in my garage? I don't know, I'm feeling it. I think I found an obsession that matches my uh, watch obsession. We're in a, uh, a tuna on a super engineer today. Quartz. It's quartz, man. Yeah. So anyways, uh, one of the things Pavel says that I think we can apply to our uh, watch collecting, he says, when you work out with the kettlebells, don't get burned out. Don't let the, the rest between the sets be so minimal that you're exhausted. You need to treat your workouts like it's a good, healthy practice, and when you're done, you own the kettlebell workout. It doesn't own you. And I'm thinking to myself, this applies to watches. We, we should own our watch hobby. It shouldn't own us, and too often it owns us. Uh, God knows I, uh, you know, I, I've fallen victim to that. In fact, one of you guys uh, put a comment on a... Uh, on my most recent uh, post, you said, what, what are you doing, man? You're going to acro over watches. And I'm thinking, yeah, I did go acro because I just how I'm built. That's how I'm hardwired. I'm not an easygoing dude. I tend to go acro over just about everything. So I'm not bragging about it. I'm just telling you that's how I'm hardwired. So if I go acro over someone texting while they're driving and almost hitting a bunch of people, I'm going to go acro over my watch collection. So one of you uh, wrote something uh, fascinated me. Uh, Anthony Schillingford. Uh, he was responding to um, my last video. I was saying, you know, um, I was trying to get away from automatics, trying to be practical, and uh, honestly, I got a little depressed. I got a little uh, lackluster with my uh, with my collection, and uh, I, I've since bought. Uh, some automatics so that my current collection now is five quartz watches. Three of those are echo drives, two are straight quartz like this tuna. And then I now have four automatics. Actually three of the four aren't even here yet. They're on their way. They're on their way. Anyways, uh, Anthony Schillingford uh, responding to my last video he wrote this. Uh, in my opinion most watch collectors have been manipulated by the industry. In most uh, product fields. Advancements in technology are celebrated, but in the watch world this seems to have been reversed with psychobabble that rhapsodizes about uh, automatic watches uh, and then there's a lot of psychobabble about quartz watches are not alive. And uh, goes on to say, I mean when you think about it, when you wear a watch, the absolute Thing you will ever directly experience is the movement. Sure, you'll see a sweeping or ticking second hand, but other than that, and even that is no given rule, grand Seiko, an uninformed person would never know if the movement was mechanical or not. <clears throat> we watch enthusiasts make it our business to know these things, and in that path to enlightened knowledge we pollute our intellect with completely nonsensical conclusions. I guess ultimately I'm just trying to say that there is no better movement solution between quartz or mechanical. A uh, very intelligent response. I disagree with some of it. I agree with some of it. Uh, let me give you some disagreement here. Watch hobbyists, watch collectors, watch obsessives. My experience is they're smart dudes. They do their research. They don't get manipulated when it comes to whether they want an automatic watch or a quartz watch. Uh, in fact, uh, watch dudes might do a little too much research. Maybe you should just stop the research, take your wife out, take her out right now. 
it's time to take her out to dinner. You've been doing way too much watch research. If anything, uh, watch dudes uh, are inoculated from manipulation because they do so much research. It, and personally, and this is not just my personal story, but it's testimony from uh, thousands of uh, watch obsessives, uh, dozens and dozens who've communicated with me. When it comes to an automatic watch, it's experience, it's not manipulation. I mean, I've, exp I've experienced uh, quartz, solar quartz, and automatic. This is a straight quartz watch. It's a, it's a beautiful watch. It's a tuna. It has a lot of DNA of the MM300. And I, I put it on a, a super engineer here. Having said that, of uh, the three types of uh, watches I have, straight quartz is my least satisfying experience, just, just from wearing it all the time. Solar gives me some connection, but the most connection I feel is with a, um, an automatic. And I tried to get away from the automatics, and it um, wasn't working for me. I, I was feeling pretty lackluster. Now, having said that, I, I do think um, that in life, we don't always want the bells and whistles of modernity. I and mean, of course, often we do, but there are exceptions. Let me give you an example. My favorite way to make coffee is with a chrome coffee percolator with a swan pouring spout. We're talking, I have a, a collection of coffee percolators from the 50s, 60s. And they're basic, man. And there's, there's just no frills, no bells and whistles. And I love them. I mean, they don't break. Um, you can buy, you can get advanced technology. I, I can buy coffee makers that can make coffee, espresso, Keurig. They can make froth, whipped cream, latte. They can give you a back massage. They can do all the bells and whistles. I'll tell you one thing, man. Some of these new coffee makers, their shelf life is about a year, and then they break down, man. So, I mean, a lot of the modern stuff, it might have more bells and whistles, but a lot of it's junk. And uh, I don't think watch guys are, are into, the, into the, uh, the scene of buying junk, that's for sure. So sometimes, yeah, I get it, man. I'm not a Luddite. I, I like the new stuff. Uh, I want the newest... Uh, i9 uh, Intel chip for my computer. I want the 4K screen. I want to, I want to get all the upgrades, uh, you know, firmware upgrades and everything. I, I'm not a Luddite, man. But sometimes in life, the romance, for example, of an automatic watch is real. And so I just want to put that in there. Now, I do think that uh, Anthony is correct about manipulation. I just don't think it's with automatic watches. I do think there is a certain amount of manipulation in the industry. You have to own such and such watch. You have to own such and such Swiss luxury watch. You have to spend a minimum of $3,000 or you're not legit. Well, that's nonsense. That's manipulation. I also see a lot of manipulation in the experience of FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, you know, there's a lot of watch channels. Um, like Random Rob, he's got a lot of watches coming in. He's got a great system. And he's, he's even made a video warning you, don't look at my watch channel as your reality. This is, this is make-believe land, man. I don't even own most of these watches. I end up selling them for, for, the, uh, for the original owners. This is make-believe land. Don't, don't get into this fear of missing out. And I'm sure that with social media and YouTube channels such as this one, there can be a degree of, of uh, manipulation. So watch dudes are smart. I, I don't think... Manipulation is the biggest problem. I think the biggest problem is, and this is me speaking personally now, absolutes. We love absolutes. I will absolutely only have quartz watches. I will absolutely have only solar quartz watches. I will absolutely only have automatic watches. I must absolutely have only diver watches. I must absolutely have only Seiko watches. That's it. I must absolutely have only Grand Seiko watches. I must absolutely have only Rolex watches. I must absolutely have, my watches have all 44 millimeter diameter bezels. Nothing more, nothing less. I must always have exactly seven watches in my collection. Not six, not eight, seven. 
you know, and these absolutes are ridiculous. And I know we all look for absolutes because absolutes are a false promise to deliver us from our madness. We are, of course we're mad. It's, I mean, we laugh about it, but there's a certain madness involved with it. So I think absolutes are more of a danger than industry manipulation. So, tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Do you feel that you've been manipulated by the industry? Do you think you've been manipulated by your romantic longing for automatic watches? Uh, do you find yourself being drawn to absolutes? You want absolute rules in your watch collection. Maybe you went through a phase of absolutes and you got out of it. Tell me about it, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, tell me what you think. Until next time, I'm out.